Throughout history, there were only a few well-known female pirates. Among them are Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Mrs. Ching. Some, like Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, dressed as men on board their ships to hide the fact that they were women. Anne Bonny, known to be one of the most fearsome pirates to have sailed the oceans, is one of the most influential and more well-known. For most of her career as a pirate, she sailed with Captain Calico Jack Rackham. Most of what is known about Anne Bonny's early years derives primarily from the book A General History of Pirates. She is believed to have been born in Ireland around 1700. Anne and her family moved to Charleston, South Carolina early in her life. She is said to be the daughter of a wealthy British lawyer, possibly William Cormack. Going against her father's wishes, Anne married a young aspiring sailor and pirate, James Bonny. It is believed that James Bonny only married Anne for her father's money. After the marriage, her father disowned her. After losing her inheritance, Anne and James Bonny moved to Nassau on New Providence Island, a known asylum for English pirates. While in Nassau, Anne had become accustomed to spending much of her time in the saloons with the various pirates and sailors. It was during this time that she met Calico Jack Rackham and fell in love with him. Soon after they moved to Nassau, Governor Woods Rogers began handing out King's pardons to many pirates, and James Bonney turned into an informant. Anne soon found out that James had turned into an informant for the governor of the Bahamas, and she went and joined Rackham's crew. A common custom that took the place of a typical divorce in this time was to put one's wife up for sale to the highest bidder. Jack Rackham offered to pay for Anne's divorce of James, but James turned him down. Some sources state that it was her use of disguising herself as a man that allowed her to escape her husband to join the pirate crew. Even at a young age, Anne Bonny was known for her temper. At age 13, Anne stabbed a servant girl with a knife from the table. Although she spent a short time under Calico Jack Rackham's command, she became one of the most well-known and fearsome pirates in history. It was not common practice to have a woman on board a ship because it was said to be bad luck. Many believed that the reason Rackham allowed her on board is because Anne was said to have been just as good a pirate as any man, if not better. She could fight, drink, and swear, just as good as any of the male pirates. It was reported by captured sailors, after they had their vessels captured by Bonnie and Rackham's crew, that it was Anne and Mary Reed, another female pirate under Rackham's command, who encouraged greater bloodshed and violence by their crewmates. While under Rackham's command, Anne Bonnie was not the only female disguising herself on his vessel. Mary Reed also disguised herself as a male and joined Rackham's crew. Anne Bonny is said to have become attracted to Reed, while she, at the time, did not know that Reed was in fact a female. She revealed herself as a woman to Reed, trying to seduce her. Reed then confessed that she was a woman too. Various sources state that, at this point, the two entered into a lesbian relationship, while others contest this, stating, that it stopped there, but the two remained extremely close. While aboard ship, Anne did not conceal her gender from her shipmates, though when pillaging, she disguised herself as a man and participated in armed conflict. Although she tried to hide her identity as a woman, it was reported by one captive that he knew she and Mary Reed were female by the largeness of their breasts. It was not until November 15, 1720 that Anne Bonny and the rest of Rackham's crew were captured at Negril Point, Jamaica. Governor Woods Rogers had authorized privateers to hunt and capture them and other pirates for bounties. Yet it was the privateer Captain Jonathan Barnett that caught up to them and captured them. When their capture was imminent, it was only Anne Bonny and Mary Reed who had enough fight left in them to do battle against Barnett and his crew. While they fought, Rackham and the rest of the crew hid in the hold of the vessel. The two women swore and called to the rest of Rackham's crew for help, to no avail. 
They were soon captured despite their fervent attempt to defeat the governor's men. It was decrees such as the one that follows from Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End that allowed the governor to dispatch the privateers to capture the pirates. In order to effect a timely halt to deteriorating conditions and to ensure the common good, a state of emergency declared for these territories by decree of Lord Cutler Beckett, duly appointed representative of His Majesty the King. By decree, according to martial law, the following statutes are temporarily amended. Right to assembly, suspended. Right to habeas corpus, suspended. Right to legal counsel, suspended. Right to verdict by a jury of peers, suspended. By decree, all persons found guilty of piracy, or aiding a person convicted of piracy, or associating with a person convicted of piracy, shall be sentenced to hang by the neck until death. Rackham and the male crew members were expeditiously tried and convicted of piracy. Rackham was hanged with four other men at Gallows Point in Port Royal on November 18, 1720. However, before his execution, Anne Bonney was allowed to see him, where she reportedly said to him, If you had fought like a man, you need not have been hanged like a dog. Anne Bonney, along with Mary Reed, Although they were arrested and tried for piracy, both pleaded their bellies, or in other words, pleaded that they were pregnant. Both claims were investigated and found to be true. Being pregnant at this time was a common reason for the stay of execution for female pirates. Anne Bonney was sentenced to prison, but it is unclear what actually happened to her after the stay of execution. Some sources say Bonnie was released, likely due to her father's influence. She returned to Charleston, where she married, had children, and lived out the remainder of her life. Although piracy is not a career I would condone, it was a common one in Anne Bonnie's time. Some were never really given a choice. Others, like Anne Bonnie, chose the life of piracy over their lives they previously led. Some were notorious enough to get themselves written into the history books, whereas others go down in history only known to their fellow pirates. What would you have done? Would you have chosen the life of a pirate or that of a privateer? Thanks. Started to sing. 